Hello and welcome to another video in my little Cranoak series. This video is going to take a little more of an academic approach. Disclaimer, I still haven't studied archaeology, but I've been reading a little bit. And uh, we'll start off with two book recommendations. The first one is by Aidan O'Sullivan, now Professor Aidan O'Sullivan, which I have mentioned in previous videos. And I think it came out in 2000. This is what it looks like. And it's a tiny very short book. It has 48 pages and a lot of pictures, which is great. And if you read it and if you've been to the National Museum, you might recognize some of the finds from the National Museum in Dublin, which I found very exciting. When he wrote that book, only nine, I think only nine chronos had been excavated. So there has been a lot more research done since then. And uh, a lot new discoveries have been made. And what I found a bit confusing when I read it was that he says that there are all the, or I think he says, Cranokes as we know them are all early medieval or something like that. Don't quote me on that. And I thought, but I had read that they can be Neolithic and Bronze Age and whatsoever. But I think what is meant is that all the Cranokes that had been excavated until that point, all these nine, were all early medieval. I think that's what he means. Um, and since then, I purchased this book. It's an early Christmas present to myself. I'm going to have to put it down because it's very heavy. Thump. That's how heavy it is. Um, so I got that for myself for Christmas. Um, and it has a couple of pages on Knooks as well. And um, more of the more recent research. And if you're an archaeologist watching and you're jealous why I'm uh, promoting Aidan O'Sullivan all the time, that's not, I don't know him, I haven't met him. It's just because in preparation for this video, I came across one of his excavations and that's how I, I found out about him and uh, I've just googled him and that's how I found out. Anyway, so we're using an excavation that is recorded on excavations.ie. Uh, that is a website where proper archaeologists, not like me, people with uh, a degree and a license, um, after they've done their excavations, they write a report and they can upload it there and they should upload it there. Um, it, it takes a long time because nobody really likes writing reports, I suppose. But you can find some of the excavations there. Um, I was trying to, um, I'm still in the process of getting the whole tagging sorted out. So I still want to change um, the tag on OpenStreetMap from site type to archaeological site. And one of the questions asked during the discussion was, surely you only want to tag those that have been excavated? And I said, no, 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 no. Like, first of all, how would we know, like, when we see something on satellite view, which is how most of us are, uh, how I map most of the sites on OpenStreetMap is how I see them, is on satellite view. Um, how would I know if they're excavated just by looking at the satellite view? I don't want to go in and research for every ring for it if it has been excavated. Chances are they haven't been. So, uh, like, the estimation, again, Aidan O'Sullivan's estimation, 14,000. 40,000, sorry, 40,000 ring forts. How would we know how many of them are excavated? And 99%, 99.9% of ring forts probably aren't. Uh, Cranoaks, uh, the number in both books is 1,200 uh, that he estimates, but in a recent video he said 2,000. So, and the, the number is still growing, you know, with me discovering more and more <laughs> um, Cranoaks. So, I, I want to map all the archaeological sites as long as there is some sort of proof for it. Like if you can see it on satellite view, you might not be able to say, okay, this is a ring fort or this is just a circular enclosure or it could just be, I'm not, not just a Killeen, but something roundish. And uh, I just want to map all of these as long as you can see them on a satellite view or if, if you know they have been excavated because you've read about it in the newspaper or uh, I don't know, seen it on the telly. Um, or on Time Team, for example, going back to the last one. So excavations.ie, cut a long story short, is one of the sources where you could find out if you wanted to just map things that have been excavated. So you go to excavations.ie and click on search um, here. And uh, the best thing to do, I think, I'm not quite sure the keyword search works really well, but if you go down to site type, ironically, the tag I'm trying to get rid of on OpenStreetMap, um, 
type in Cranoke. Somebody seems to have done that before. And hit search. There are other ways to search for them, but we won't go through those. And that comes up with 22 results. And they might not all be actual Cronoke sites. So the first one here, um, the report is from 2004 and it's in Couleur Domain. I hope I pronounced that right. Uh, and lo and behold, um, excavated by Aidan O'Sullivan. And it says a prehistoric and medieval Cronoke. Um, there was another one that caught my eye uh, down here. J. Bradley, UCD. So that's John Bradley. He was a an archaeologist from Kilkenny, but when you click on it, you'll find out that there isn't actually a report there. There's just literature given where to find it. But there, there was a podcast recently, and if I don't forget, I'll link it down in the description. And it's very interesting to listen to it, and um, about John Bradley's life and and how he excavated that Cranoke and so on. But I'm going with the first one uh, because it's also, I think, one of the most recent ones apart from the just ignore the 2012 one but i think when i checked it was the most recent anyway click on it and then we have so this is the report number i think the townland the county and then we have all of that again the sites and monuments records number doesn't have one um yet sure it's only 18 years ago uh, and then there's the li license number and the author of the report, blah, 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 what it is, and the Irish Transverse Marketer coordinates, which uh, we don't like, but there are also um, GPS coordinates, so longitude, latitude and longitude. And there's also a map displayed there. And you hopefully know that one of the golden rules of OpenStreetMap is don't copy other maps. But the good thing about this map is that they're using OpenStreetMap and they have even attributed it after I pointed it out to them. Um, so they're using um, the default map box style, um, which unfortunately doesn't show archaeological sites or historic sites that are already mapped. That would be nice to have that. So um, just by going in, you won't see whether it's mapped already or not. So it's probably this one there. So the GPS coordinates aren't entirely correct all the time. So even if you are um, afraid that maybe they used ordnance survey maps in the process of creating this report, which they very likely did, unfortunately, you still have to go into the map and uh, identify the location anyway. So anyway, so we get it down here and then there is a short, it's not the whole report, I would say, say it's just um, an abstract of the report. It says what they found, like animal bones, wood, plant, macrofossil, insect remains, but it also has um, the size, 35 meters in width, four meters in height, tree topped stony island, and so on. I won't read it all out. Um, but it says, for example, the project has revealed that the island was first built, so it is an artificial island, first built, and occupied in circa 850 BC in the Late Bronze Age. So hooray, it's not early medieval. So it is actually Late Bronze Age. Um, but then when you go down further, um, you will find that it was also reactivated during the transition between the Pagan Iron Age, Early Christian periods, Ireland's Dark Ages. And um, so there was another, um, there were oak planks used and they could be um, the tree ring analysis or dendrochrono dendrochronology. It sounds so easy when they say it on YouTube, but then I'm trying to pronounce it and I just uh, get knots in my tongue. Dendrochronology. So the dendrochronology found out that the trees had been felled in 402. So that's um, early Christian in Ireland. And then I think, uh, yeah, it was then occupied until circa 650 AD and so on and so forth. And then uh, they also found that it was also occupied in the 9th and 10th century um, with a, and the site may have been raised with a mantle of stone. So there's a quite a long it's not a continuous um, occupational period, but we can use all these when we're mapping it. So we have early Bronze Age, early medieval, and then, well, this is technically still early medieval. Um, I don't think they don't mention any. Well, it says it does include a range of Viking artifacts, but we're still not going to call it 
Viking because we don't know if it was actually Vikings living there or if they just traded Viking goods, they being the more or less native Irish. So this is um, this is the Crandor Quarkana map. So I'm going to OpenStreetMap. And I won't use the coordinates, I'll use the townland name, Kulior Domain. And I have already typed that before. I did a little bit of preparation. So this is what it looks like on the standard view on OpenStreetMap. So we have the lake here, which is Loch Deravara. Something about oaks, I presume. So there we have the townland or part of the townland on OpenStreetMap. There is called your house. I'm probably pronouncing that wrong as usual. And you can already see, like I said on this one here, that it, did I say that? That it might be this one here because it's kind of an obvious little island and the marker is in the wrong position. Sometimes I don't know, do I do that on purpose so people don't go and with metal detectors, which is illegal if you don't have a license? And I don't know. Um, so we'll just go in and have a look at what the map looks like, All right? So um, I have the British War Office map activated at the moment. And it shows that you, you probably saw that already that there was something mapped here, which looks like a ring fort very much. It's only mapped as an archaeological site. And then we have this tiny island here, Eilidge. And then there's a potential Cronoke here as well. Uh, maybe you can see, I'll turn the data off. Okay, so that makes it a bit more easy to see. So we have a potential ring fort here. And then we have an islet here, which looks very, very circular. So that might be it. And then we also have one here that isn't quite circular, but there might also be a crown oak there. And then we have another one here that seems to be an islet, maybe. And that, but that's the British War Office map, which is at least 80 years old, based on older maps. Um, so if we go into Esri, um, we can still see the potential ring fort and whatever this is. Um, that's a bit suspicious. And then we still have the little... It still looks fairly circular if you consider that the trees growing tall will make it look not circular, if you get my meaning. And this is still here. The other one... I don't know, I can't see that anymore. And there's some a pavilion or something, but we're not interested in that. So I would presume it's this one. And that's not what I meant to do. Uh, turn on the data layer again. Yeah, so I'll I'll go with this one if I could make sure. So uh, yeah, um, I could go to the historic environment viewer. So uh, maps, well, you could just search online for historic environment viewer or it's maps.archaeology.ie slash historic environment. And then I could type in cool your, no, cool your domain, Westmeath. That's where it is. So that's the house that we see here. And then we have the ring fort here. I'll switch to the 25 inch map because it's it's the closest you can get to the British War Office map because I think that's what it's based on. So we have the ring fort here uh, by Valaid and then the circular island here EL. I don't know what that means. And then another one here which also says EL. And another one here EL and another one here with EL. Haven't the foggiest what that means. Um, if anyone knows, please put it in the comments. So, um, as I said, I, I presume it's this one. And just to confirm, I'll click on the red dot here, which signifies a, a monument that's from before 1700. And it is a Cranoke, to nobody's surprise, really. And there uh, seems to be a really long description here. 
and even a photograph, lovely. And some references, and I think when that was compiled, maybe the book that I showed you, the really heavy one, wasn't published because it's fairly recent, I think. Well, more recent than this compilation, anyway. But that seems to be the one. Anyway, I'm just gonna disregard all these possible islands for now and concentrate on this one because it was kind of obviously this one because it's very circular. So um, the it's already excluded from the lake, which I was struggling with in the Wales video, so I don't have to do that again now. Um, but I know what I did wrong, so that's good. And uh, we define it as an island, islet, because it isn't yet. So we'll go in and add place I eyelid. And um, if you saw the one about the, uh, what's it called? Loch Marins, Cranog, in County Kilkenny, um, and you watched until the end, you saw that it wasn't displayed on the map. And I don't think it was because of the private access. I do think it is actually because um, the natural island or eyelid and the historic site exclude each other. And that's why it's not displayed on the standard view. But I checked for the Loch Marins on uh, Osmond on my uh, the app on my phone and it was displayed there. So it's just an issue with the uh, the Carto style in the standard view. So we don't really have to worry too much about it. So I'm not going to draw an extra circle because we're not supposed to map for the renderer, even though Guilty is charged. Um, so we're just going to use this part here for the Cranog. So what we have to add then is historic archaeological site. Nothing has changed there yet in the tagging scheme. And then the site type Cranog. And I don't know if I showed you that the last time, that it already comes up when you type CRA, because I have mapped... 170, I don't remember, 176 or something now. And I think after 100 or so, the ID editor will recognize the word, if you get me. So uh, you don't have to type the whole thing in yet, but you can't type it in here. So if you type in Cranoke here, it won't come up because it's not an approved tag. So go back here. Cranoke. And... Uh, so far, so good. It hasn't changed to archaeological site equals Cranoke yet. It might, though. So keep looking uh, on the wiki. So then we want to add the reference number, even though it says here that there isn't one. Uh, they probably don't have the staff to update all of this, unfortunately. So uh, the good thing is that OpenStreetMap is going to be better than all the government sites at some point. Wow. So uh, I'll copy the sites and monuments records number here. Uh, it's WM for Westmeath. I still haven't found out how the rest works. Um, it could be that the number is the surveyor. That's how it works with the attached buildings. And then it's a consecutive number. So the first number might not be the townland. It might be the surveyor. Um, Yes, so copy that and then we add it to OpenStreetMap with ref colon ie colon smr for sites and monument records and paste that. Um, and then we could also, um, I would really like to link to this. So I'm just going to put it on our website. It's probably not super correct. So copy the whole address there. Um, yep. Is there anything else we need to do? Add a description. Excavated by Aiden O. Sullivan. Further reference on excavations.ie. I suppose what I could do is establish a new uh, key. Ref colon IE excavations or something like that. It's a bit long. And then I could use this number here. Presuming that it is 
what you call it, uh, it's only used there. I would have to do some research into that. So I'm not going to do it now, obviously. And now for the dating of the Kranok, um, as you could see in the excavations and numbers we had talked about, it's late Bronze Age, late Iron Age, early Christian and all these kinds of things. And I find the tagging scheme a little bit confusing and all this, um, it's all explained on the wiki. Historic civilization is one of the keys and historic period is another one. And of course it's different for every country or for every region. So I spent some time and made this graphic for Ireland and I hope it's somewhat correct. So we are in, we're starting in the late Bronze Age here and it's going up to basically the Viking Age. But it's not called Viking Age, it's just called Viking. And so I've tried to do this with color. So historic civilization is all the green stuff. So we can use prehistoric, medieval, suppose we could also use Celtic. And the historic period is the kind of, what do you call that color? Pink? I don't know. Um, so we have Bronze Age, Iron Age and Early Christian there. And then we could have, I'm not quite sure, Early Medieval, if that is a civilization or if that's an era or a period. It's, the tagging is a bit confusing and I'm sure I've done it wrong in the past. I just sat down there for about two hours now and figured this graphic out to help me in the future. So I can, that's my little cheat sheet now. Hopefully I got it all right. So this is what we're going to use. We'll start with historic civilization. So prehistoric and medieval. And they're all, as you could see in the graphic, they're all in small caps. And we have to um, separate them with a the semicolon. So prehistoric semicolon medieval. And then with the period, we're going for Bronze Age, Iron Age and Early Christian. And you can see they overlap sometimes. So Bronze Age, Iron Age, Early Christian, all hyphenated. Bronze Age, Iron minus Age, semicolon, early Christian. I would prefer to say late Bronze Age because the Bronze Age is quite long, but that's not um not an option here. I presume it would be the historic era. But I don't know. And then of course we want to save that. So added Kranok, I've done that before a couple of times, um, with the hashtag and the sources were excavations.ie is reclarity, is the aerial imagery, the sites and monuments record, SMR, that should do, and then hit upload. Shinny will. I wouldn't think that there is a Wikipedia article about it or a Wikidata. We can check just in case. Wikidata. So I'm wearing my little Wiki Commons badge there. Um, cool. I'm usually better at spelling. Call your domain. It has the townland defined. Well, that's not really what I'm looking for. Let's go for Commons. Are you telling me they uploaded photographs of the finds? That would be amazing. Oh, this is Cornwall. It says Westmeath here though. So maybe that is one of the finds they, and I think I've seen that actually also in the National Museum. Somebody should probably add uh, an English description to this image but it says uh, from Collior Domain here and County Westmeath in Italian 7th to 8th century that's amazing 
but they're not from Kalur because they're Anglo-Saxon, I presume. So there's nothing there, you, you know, to nobody's surprise apart from this one here that some tourist, I presume, in the National Museum took a picture of and uploaded to Wikicommons. Thank you. Psycho. So that is something that would be nice if there was an image, if you live near there somewhere and you have access to that lake, or if you have a drone and permission to fly a drone there and take a picture, like there was on the uh, Historic Environment Viewer, would be nice to add that as well. But there isn't. Um, I might create a Wikidata entry for this one and then add a Wikidata entry into the tags here. So when you go and check it out, you might find the Wikidata entry, okay? It's the next day and I've just updated my Osmond map material. And we go in and you see that it is displayed as an archaeological site or a historic site anyway. And when I click on it, it gives me some of the information that I put in. I've also added an image link to the image on the Sites and Monuments Record website. And I have created a Wikidata entry, but it's just not showing here. But it is there now. So thank you for watching this. And I hope you learned something, maybe. A little and there's a lot to discover there are a lot of cranoaks in county westmeath because there are quite a few lakes i haven't really looked for them much because i'm still in cabin working on cabin still discovering some there maybe in the future i'll find more i think i probably don't have to look around that lake because aiden has done that already so i hope you're enjoying this little series so far if you haven't watched the first and second and however many i've done before this Please go back and watch them and share with your friends if you think it's worth sharing. I know I'm a bit all over the place, to be honest. But I, I can't really plan ahead much because I, I, with the map, I don't know. Maybe somebody has gone in and mapped the Crown Oak if, you know, that I had chosen. So I can't really script it properly. So please accept my apologies for my chaotic behavior. And I'm still hoping it's kind of entertaining to you, maybe. Thank you for all my new subscribers as well. It always amazes me that what, when I get new ones, it's not in the thousands or anything, but it's every person counts. Keep doing that and also keep watching the videos. So I shall hopefully see you in another one soon. Slan.